If you've not read one of his books, perhaps you've enjoyed one of the many movies that have been based on his books, such as The Notebook, A Walk to Remember, Message in a Bottle, or Nights in Rodanthe. It's our pleasure to welcome Nicholas Sparks to the program. Nicholas is here in Indianapolis to present the 32nd Annual McFadden Memorial Lecture at North Central High School, sponsored by the Library Foundation and its many donors. Nicholas, thanks for joining us on the program. Hey, Great thanks. to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Ever been to Indianapolis before? I have, three or four times, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I went to school at Notre Dame, so we came down here whenever yeah. we wanted to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to do it again tonight at the McFadden Lecture. Absolutely, Lecture. absolutely. Oh, how your life has changed over the last 15 years since yeah. you wrote the notebook. Record lengths of time on the New York Times yeah. bestseller list. Your family now in North Carolina. The, the movies that have been based on your books. Yeah. Beyond your wildest dreams? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I, I don't really tend to think of it that way, though. I, I never look back at what we've done. I'm kind of, I'm always too busy looking forward to where I want to go or what I want to do or and things yeah. like that. So, yeah, I guess if you, if I look back, I say, yeah, there's been a lot of changes. But in the end, I think you're going to be, I think that any kind of fame or, or any wealth that you accumulate, it's kind of, I always tell people it's an amplifier. Uh -huh. Who you are on the inside, really, you just become more of. So if you're kind of a nice person, you become more generous. And if you're not a nice person, well, you become. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you get asked a lot about your writing intent. Is it difficult to, what you're writing, putting on paper, not think of that in terms of how it's going to translate into a movie in this day and age with all of your success with the Hollywood film? Yeah, uh, it's not hard at all. It, it, in, in that sense, writing writing well is always challenging. It is one of the, it, it's far and away the most challenging thing that I do. I, I think writing is easy, writing what you want to write is easy, I think writing average is easy, I think writing good is not so bad. But if you really want to write something well that really has the potential to last for a long time, mm -hmm. if, for instance, the notebook is coming out in Cliff Notes, a walk to remember is coming out in Cliff Notes, uh, if you have this movie interest to do something that kind of does that, that's kind of hard. I mean, yeah. it might not be hard for Stephen King or whatever, but it's hard for me. I find this, <laughs> I find this very challenging to do. So I don't, I'm so wrapped up in just trying to write the best novel that I can that I don't necessarily think about the films. I'm, okay. I'm, when I'm writing the novel, that's all I'm doing. Good. And to what extent do you get involved in the films? Do you attend the filmmaking itself, or do you have any kind of editorial control when being consulted on the films? Uh, well, yeah, I go. I'll go you to the go. set once or twice. Yeah, there's an old yeah. saying. It's a, it goes like this. It says, the most exciting day you'll ever spend is your first day on a movie set. The most boring day you'll ever spend is day number two. <laughs> and that's very true because uh, most people have no idea what it's, it's like. You think it's all boring. I mean, they're moving cameras for hours and hours. I mean, that's essentially what they do. They move cameras and set up lights, and that's what you watch. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I go once or twice. I generally meet the people involved. Uh, any input that I have is really limited to the screenplay, and that's usually once the you know once they're ready for me to take a look at it, and then they, they might ask me for notes or something yeah. like that. And I, then I toss mine in with the director's notes and the you know, maybe an actor's notes and things like that. Well, over the last 15 years, again, you have been so prolific in your writing, and you're yeah. so busy in other aspects of your life. How important is the writing to you these days? Is, is there still a lot of gas in the tank, so to speak, your love of writing is still there? Oh man, I never loved writing. <laughs> That's the thing, <laughs> you know, I mean, writing is, writing, as I said, it's very, very challenging. It is, um, you know, when it goes well, you're happy, and when it goes not well, you're not very happy. And most often it doesn't go well, you know, when you're in knee deep into it. I mean, there's just mm. a lot of challenges. Um, I write because I, I think I can do it because I think I can. I, I guess I'm more into the challenge of, of okay. doing it again, as opposed to the love of writing itself. I really, I say to myself, can I write the best story I've ever written? Can I do something that I'm really proud to have written? And in the end, that's really my sole goal is, it's like why you would climb Mount Everest the second time. It's like, well, I've already done it once, but why would I do it again? Because can I do it faster, or can I do it better, or uh -huh. you know, with less support, or something like that? So you, kind of like you have that. a continued motivation. So, I, so it's it's just really something internal about that. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I do have a lot of other interests, and, and fortunately, what I do allows me to to have some time to do some of those things. Well, let's at least talk about one of your books, your most recent bestseller, The Lucky One. Can okay. you share with us about 
that book, what it's about, and uh, yeah, let me let me see if I can get back to it. You know, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's a you know, it's one of my favorite books. I was optioned by Warner uh, Warner Brothers. I think they're going to start filming it later this summer. Um, and it's a great story. It's about a, a soldier in Iraq. He's uh, actually in Kuwait prior to the invasion of Iraq, and he. He finds a photograph, obviously dropped by an American serviceman in the sand. He finds this photograph. It's a beautiful woman. And over the course of his three tours in Iraq, he, he begins to view this um, photograph as his lucky charm, making him the lucky one because he uh -huh. had found it. And so after the war, he goes to find this person in the photograph because he feels he owes her his life. Wow. There you go. Well, we will just let people read the rest of the book to find yeah. out what happens. Uh, you went to the University of Notre Dame. You yeah. had a huge athletic interest. At the time, what, some 20 years ago, you were part of the track relay school record setting still team. Holds, still still stands. holds. You're proud of that. Of course, of course. And you read 125 books a year. Yeah. How do you, what's the secret? How do you do all this? Oh, man, I, I love reading, so I always make time for that. So I read in every spare moment that I can. I always have a book with me, so. I mean, seriously, I have a book in my car, so at the red light, I have a book to read. I mean, you know, I'll read for a minute. No book on tape or on CD? No, just no, I, just, I just like to read, you know, I'm just that kind of guy. Um, so I do that, I have five children, you know, my wife and I, we founded a, a Christian school, it, it's grades 5 through 12, so we're very actively involved in that. Um, I coach a local public high school track team, we just actually, it's a very good team, we just went to the Nike Indoor Nationals last weekend, it, it was March, uh, whatever it was, 14th, and uh, we won four national championships. Congratulations. Yeah, we set the national high school record earlier in the season in the 4 by 400 you know, probably the premier relay event indoors. And so I've had a lot of fun doing that. It's kind of how I stay involved oh, great, in track. Great, great. So and, and you're still involved with the university through the creative writing program. What's your right. support for that? Well, I, I funded the creative writing program. Well, not the, the, the a, a portion of it. You know, they had the program, but then I came in and funded the things that I thought were important in the program. So it, it provides scholarships for really good uh, incoming writers. It provides fellowships. And it, what it also does, and I thought was important, is it sends 20% of the writing class to New York over the summer in between oh, the cool. two-year program. So they either intern at agencies or a publishing house. So they actually know what the business is like. Because I remember when I tried to get in, I had no idea what an agency even looked like, you know, or, or what do they do in a publishing house? Well, this way they'll know that, look, this is how many query letters you get. These are the ones that get it. You see how agents work and think. You can network, meet people. So if you come out of the program, you ever write a book, well, now you know someone to send it to. Well, fantastic. A great, another involvement of Nicholas Sparks. And thanks for joining us oh, on my the pleasure. program. Best of luck tonight at the McFadden Lectures, sponsored Thank you. by the Library Foundation. You can check out all of Nicholas Sparks' books on the library website through the library catalog at imcpl.org.